Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a very special Tuesday edition of the Todd Clint SharePoint Podcast. This momentous occasion is podcast number 339, and we filmed it live Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017. Uh, I am Todd Clint, the namesake of said podcast. You can hit me up on Twitter at Todd Clint. Email me, Todd, at ToddClint.com. I think I'm going to buy the domain uh, ShaneSucks.com, so that you could also email me at Todd at ShaneSucks.com. Um, but speaking of Shane and, and, and him sucking, tell the folks, I don't know which side you're on now, since we're doing it the other way. I don't... Yeah, it's confusing. Well, you know, and I would just like to point out as many domains as you've bought over the years, I can't believe you haven't bought Shane Sucks yet. I, I probably I, have. It's probably somewhere in the list of 80 to 90 domains that I own. Yeah, you can go to buy it and then be like, well, someone else owns it. You're going to internet auction with yourself. Be like, I'm bidding against myself to buy a domain for myself. I can see you doing that. So, uh, I would like to argue with you, but I got nothing. So anyway, my name is Shane Young. I am the person who makes this show actually entertaining and fun. And you can hit me up on Twitter at Shane's Cows. You can email me, shane.young at boldzebras.com, right? Everybody loves a zebra. And always my YouTube channel, Shane Young Cloud. Fabulous, fabulous place. And how many subscribers do you have on YouTube, Shane? Oh, I haven't looked in so long. Let me oh, see if I can Good guy. You quoted me the number like two hours ago. Maybe was it, less. Was it 3,030? Nice 30-30. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, we're on a completely unrelated call today with somebody, a customer, and he still finds a way to wedge in. The, oh, did I mention my 3,000? Oh, hate that guy. Um, production notes So there, for production notes, <laughs> uh, last week we were having some problems with the video. My machine couldn't keep up, so we decided this would be a great time to move everything to Shane's machine. We spent a solid two hours fighting it yesterday, couldn't get it to work. Uh, I think we've mostly got it working now. There are some video problems with my video, I think, this work this week, uh, but we'll try to get that working. Uh, the big note for production notes is that there will be no podcast recorded next week. And so if you're in the States, that is Memorial Day, Monday the 29th, no podcast next week. Unless we want to do another Tuesday one, I guess. Uh, but uh, you'll get your podcasting fix in two weeks. That's yeah, very sad for those people that listen to podcasts every week. They're like, no one does them on... Uh... Memorial Days and different holidays. Should be more hell, considerate. Let's, let's do it on Tuesday. I got nothing. I I don't care. And we'll uh, we'll see what happens, right? We'll uh, jump in there and probably just like we did this week, be like, oh, nothing works again. Like yeah. this setup is not going to survive a reboot. We know that. Not not even close. Not even close. Um, so Shane's, because of the weird timing and all that, Shane's got to skedaddle in like 20 minutes. And so we need to hit some of these uh, hard and fast. And a, a bunch has happened in the last week. I've kind of lost track. But I think between when we recorded this last and today, they had that SharePoint virtual summit. And there was a bunch of things that came out of that, tons and tons of things, obviously more than we could even talk about today. For the SharePoint admins in the crowd, everybody, hey. Mm. Uh, a couple of things that came out of that. SharePoint 2016 will get feature pack two this fall. Uh, numerous and sundry things that will be in that. They didn't name them all, I don't think. But the support for the SharePoint framework, SPFX, will be included in that. So that's the new programming platform that de developers have for SharePoint Online. That they've just, they, they, and they gave that a bunch of stuff, a bunch of attention last week at Build or two weeks ago at Build. But that will be coming out uh, for on-prem SharePoint. Right, and that's really important. If you are running SharePoint 2016, we all know it's just a stopgap. We're all going to end up in the cloud on SharePoint Online at some point. If you've got devs sitting in a room making custom code today, they should be looking forward to a little feature pack two action, getting the SharePoint framework, because then they can create code that's going to run both on-prem and then out in the cloud. Whereas today, you know, a lot of those solutions they're building for on-prem, almost all of them really, right, have to be rewritten to run out in SharePoint online. So hopefully with uh, SPFX coming to on-prem in the fall sometime, we'll be able to uh, alleviate the double work. Yeah, and part of that whole uh, talk, so it, it was kind of a, I mean, I, I don't want to speak ill of it. I, I found the, the summit was a little anticlimactic, honestly. And I don't know if it's just because we kind of knew it was coming uh, from build and all that. But there was not a lot of really great things um, 
that came out of that. But the, the, so the feature pack too, and then Bill Bear from the Microsoft, uh, from the SharePoint product team, he released some videos. He wasn't like part of the summit. It was a, a weird thing. But after the summit came out, he released some videos on the tech community called SharePoint Server 2016 and Beyond and talks about some of the things that they're doing with on-prem server, mentions the feature pack two that is going to come out this fall. And he also addresses that question that we get all the time. Will there be another version of SharePoint on-prem? And his answer is very uh, LCA compliant. LCA is Microsoft's uh, legal team. They are pit bulls to the, to the worst. Um, but his answer is a very well rehearsed, we are committed to our on-premises and have no plans to make SharePoint 2016 our final version of our on-premises server. If anybody knows Bill Bear, Bill Bear does not speak like that. <laughs> I mean, that, I don't even think that, Bill knows all those words you just used. <laughs> there is, uh, there is no way that he or the Hat actually uh, uttered those words or typed those words. Um, but that is the plan. So as of right now, there is no expectation that this is the last version of on-prem. You should be going to the cloud. You are going to the cloud, but there you go. Well, that's as much legal ease as this show is permitted to have because that, that gets a little deep. And right, at least he didn't go with the one. You know, what's uh, the other one they said before they got that well rehearsed version? It was like you know, well, as long as there's demand or something yes. like that. But but who controls whether or not there's demand? Oh, you guys do. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. imagine imagine that. Um, so one of the things, uh, and, and I think this is this came out again. May, may have been build, may have been um, the, the SharePoint virtual summit. They happened week after week, and I'm just completely screwing our notes up right now. Sorry about that. I didn't notice they keep going away and coming back. <laughs> didn't, yeah. didn't see it at all. Yeah, that's one great thing about OneNote. Um, so another feature that came out, and again, I can't remember if we've talked about it or not, is Microsoft is super excited about OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, all of those things. And they released some new functionality. I think they first talked about it at Build, but um, this idea that placeholders are back. And so they talked about that a little bit more. And the placeholders being that you can have what looks like your entire uh, OneDrive infrastructure, all your files and everything on your device, but they're not actually there. They're downloaded as you need them. Uh, and so that's uh, that's pretty handy. But then they also, this week at the virtual summit, they talked about some improvements to the the, the sharing. And I think that was kind of the big uh, the big thing with Jewelry. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I, I think find it very funny that you say they're super excited about OneNote. I know you were super excited about OneNote. So I, I feel like you're OneDrive, uh, yeah. OneDrive, OneNote, whatever. Right? They like to use the same words over and over again. One vision. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I think you're projecting your love of OneDrive onto uh the one Microsoft place. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um so for, for, for OneDrive, there was kind of the, a couple of things. Number one was just this new sharing infrastructure and all of the control around it and the, the interfaces for it. They really cleaned up the interfaces on sharing inside of OneDrive so you get a better idea of who's got what, how long they've got it, when it expires. Um, just some amazing fun things. The ability to uh, share things with people that aren't in your tenant, that aren't in Office 365, period, a, a lot of stuff there. And so Shane and I have said, you know, for a long time, you need somebody in your organization who owns what's coming up new with Office 365. And this is a great example of that. They've added a bunch of new functionality for sharing, which is great. It, it empowers you and empowers your users to do things, but it also potentially could be a problem. Potentially things can get out of hand. Um, so keep an eye on that. And again, there's the new OneDrive admin center. So you can go there and you can see what files are out there, which ones have expired, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll have a link in the show notes uh, for some screenshots and all that. Um, they also, uh, OneDrive-ish, they talked about some updates to the Mac client. I've not actually ever used a Mac client, so I don't... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is good though, right? It's proof positive, as you alluded to. They're excited about it, or they at least they continue to invest in OneDrive. We we never thought they'd get it this far. It turns no. out they just keep going and going and going. No. Um, with the WannaCry virus, right? There was a or ransomware virus, whatever. Right? Yeah. They were pretty quick to kind of jump on that and say, "Hey, if all your files have been in OneDrive, right? You could open a support ticket. We would have undone the uh, version that they created with their encryption." And you've been right back in business. So, I mean, they're they're honestly trying, which is pretty exciting, I think. 
yeah, not as exciting I think, as you think, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's exciting. Not as, not as exciting as you think it is. Oh, that's hysterical. Um, another thing that they talked about, and we're not going to hit real hard, is they they've got this new idea of communication sites they introduced in SharePoint Online. Uh, so it's just kind of a new template. Shane and I, we talk about how everything to us in SharePoint is a team site, and Microsoft is doing their darndest to convince us that that's not the case anymore. Um, and so they've got these new t uh, communication sites out there, yeah, things we, like that. We should have found someone who is more of an end user to see if that was a big deal. Because I saw those communication sites, and I was just like, who the heck cares? Right? You, you've taken my team site, my precious, precious team site, and you've added some flash and fizzle to it. And it just seems like something else is going to be a pain in my butt later. Why is this here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I, and we've, we've said this a bunch of times. We've said this today to a, to a customer. We're not good SharePoint users. So potentially all the stuff that we think is dumb and users may just love. Um, very, very possible. You know, that might be uh, the survey, not to get off on that tangent, but that might be a good question to throw in there. You know, what, what is your primary role? Are you an admin, a dev, or an end user? I, I'd be curious if any of our audience is actually people who know how to use SharePoint. Yeah, I think you should do that. And, and again, you want to talk a little bit about the survey? Because I know we're trying to, to build some excitement about that. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to do a viewer, listener, whatever you guys consider yourselves, survey. Um, sufferers. Pretty, yeah, sufferers is probably the most correct. Uh, we're going to put that survey together. So we've got a first draft of it. We're kind of been posting in the Slack channel again. Um, how or passes of it, we're trying to get some feedback on the questions we're asking, making sure we're covering the right things. You know, one of the big questions that hopefully you guys will be able to provide feedback on are what are the platforms that you're using for other podcasts so we know where to put this thing. Uh, so we're, we're pretty excited for that. Hopefully by next uh, the next show we'll be able to get that out. Um, it's pretty close though. And that's all thanks to our friends at Wiser, right? W-Y-Z-E-R-R.com. Uh, fun little survey tool who's giving the show a little love these days. So we appreciate that from them. Yeah, and this is something that I've been threatening to do for five or six years is just to, you know, tweak the, the podcast a little bit. The things that I do now are not the same things that I did eight years ago when we started this. And, and so it's good to get a, a pulse on the people who are listening. It's not the same people either. Um, so well, we were talking about that while you were blathering on about whatever it is you were talking about. Uh, Blake Olson in the chat room was saying that he completely disagrees with you, that the, the communication sites are long overdue and, and a great thing. Well, no one likes Blake, so get someone's opinion that people like, and maybe I'll listen. Blake is a great man. Uh, just the, the bedrock of this nation is people like Blake. Uh, so I will not listen to you uh, besmirch his name when he says that you were wrong. The bedrock of this land. Wow. Blake, I, I think don't I know said what you've done, but kudos. Bedrock of the nation, I believe, is what I said. Um, so, yeah, so he's saying uh, a user, more user-friendly way to edit things, easier to train, mobile first. And, and I can see that. I mean, that's always been the, the charm of SharePoint, that IT folks like you and I could set it up. We could put it into a mildly trained user's hands, and they could run with it. That's always been what made SharePoint uh, extra special. So I agree that uh, if, that's, if it does that, then that's, uh, then that's a win. All right, so... Yeah. We, we got a couple of things uh, that I wanted to hit. Uh, okay, so this was something I saw on Twitter. Somebody was asking about this. Where is that at? They were looking for a way to test search or, or something, and they needed a bunch of content in SharePoint stat. They were you know, scaling or something like that. And our friends at Acceleradio, the, the people that make SP.Kit, we've talked a bunch about that. I love SP.Kit. Uh, the only company so far that I've really let advertise on my blog. I like them so much. But they also have a SharePoint data generator tool. And that's out at github.com slash acceleradio slash spdg. And that's also in the show notes. But that does that thing. It just creates a bunch of sample data, just a bunch of stuff, subsites and lists and documents and blah de blah uh, So if you need to, you know, put search through its paces or whatever, that um, that will do it. So that, that request comes up. I see that, you know, maybe a couple, three times a year. And so you can hit that GitHub thing and... Uh, and just dump some data into your, uh, your SharePoint environment. Uh, or you could be writing PowerShell at this point to create that fake data, right? I mean, it wouldn't be as good and as full fidelity as the stuff they're doing, but yeah, I'm still very sad to all of you if you can't figure out how to, now to use PowerShell to go out there and just make up a bunch of random list data and things like that. 
So, so to your point, yeah, but this is th- that whole story when uh, Tony and and I forget Tony's partner when they wrote SP Dot Kit. That was also my first thing. There's nothing that SP Dot Kit can't do that I can't do in PowerShell. And so I, you know, I, I talked bad about them. Uh, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a waste of money. I wrote a bunch of stuff in PowerShell, and then I took one look at their product, and I'm like, oh my god, this is a hundred times better, uh, more polished, more deep, and so. If you look through the things that uh, the, the document generator does, it does lists and libraries and folders and documents and web apps and site collections, all the things that we can do in PowerShell, but it's just easier to do them all at once in this tool. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I'm all for the tool, but I just want to remind everyone that if you haven't figured out how to do that in PowerShell yet, you need to go whap yourself in the knuckles, learn to do it in PowerShell, and then use the tool out on GitHub to actually do a better job of it. Are there any videos on the internet that that help people figure out how to do this stuff? Is there? I mean, there's this famous guy on YouTube. He's got oh, like three thousand subscribers. Um, he's got some videos that show you how to do that, but we, we won't talk about him right now. Oh, for God's sakes! Thank you that we want to talk about him. Uh, all right. So w- one other thing that came out last week that was kind of uh, kind of weird for a while and then kind of faded away. This just out of nowhere. Like this website popped up that talked about the next SharePoint conference coming back to Vegas. And everybody's like, the SharePoint conference? Get out of town. Uh, What? And it looked like the SharePoint conference. And the website looked like the SharePoint conference. And it had the countdown like the SharePoint conference had. Uh, And so people were like, oh, my God, Microsoft's doing another SharePoint conference in Vegas. Uh, It's not. It is a third-party conference. And it's folks that have been putting on conferences forever. It's not some fly-by-night organization. Um, but they were able to make it look enough like the official SharePoint conference website that some people thought Microsoft is doing that again. They're not. Microsoft's helping, but it's not going to be the SharePoint conference. It's not going to be, you know, twelve to 14,000 of your favorite, you know, SharePoint-loving friends. It's not going to have all of the the Microsoft pizzazz. It's going to be a great conference, all that, uh, but it is not an official Microsoft SharePoint conference. Yeah, that was a little, um, little, little, little shady. I don't know, uh, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, because you did, I, I even I've read it. I'm like, wait a minute, because they, they went to such great lengths to be like, uh, here is the 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 uh, you know, like you said, back to Vegas and Microsoft's. You know, they used Microsoft's name like seven times in the title and. And, and no more, right, they even kind of put it in the framework, like, like Microsoft would say, we didn't want to have just one big conference like Just Ignite anymore. We want to get back to just the SharePoint conference. They, they really tried to kind of twist the picture there a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I guess we should say, we, we just imagine everybody. So the website is SharePointNA.com. So I guess that's SharePoint North America. Yeah, SharePoint Conference North America. Um, so and, and again, it's it's folks that have been putting on conferences. Again, they're 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 legitimate, um, but I, I, I kind of see the thing. I think they tried a little too hard to make it look like a Microsoft deal. But again, if you're thinking about going, go. It'll be a good conference. It just won't be the Microsoft, you know, the SharePoint conference. Yeah, and I don't know anything about the event other than that. Was- Flash marketing. So I'm not saying it's a good conference or a bad conference. I just was uh, well written as a fellow marketer. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so a couple of minutes. Shane actually has a hard stop in here in a few minutes. And since he's running the show, I can't go over. Uh, today, this morning, last night for you in Asia, Microsoft released the next generation of Surface Pro. And so we were going to talk about how the Surface Pro specs had leaked, but as of this morning, Panos Pen A actually released them. So the those are out there. And I don't know if you've had a chance to look at them, Shane. We've been kind of busy today. Um, but it's it's an iterative move from the current Surface Pro. And they've taken the name out or the number out, so it's not the Surface Pro 5. It's just Surface Pro. Um, not a huge change. New Surface Pro 5, right? Yeah, next-gen Surface Pro. Yeah, well, and, I mean, and after the big rant, you know, what was that, two, three weeks ago, when he's like, hey, we're not going to release anything until it's a substantial change, and yeah, three weeks later, here's an iterative device. I, 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 don't, even, I don't understand that at all. I, I got nothing there. Yeah, uh, but for those of you that have been, you know, again, thinking about getting a new device, I've got a buddy who I've been talking to him. He's got a Surface Pro 2 or 3, I forget, but he has for months now been wanting to buy a new device, but he, you know, so we've been talking about when do we think something's going to come out, and they did the Surface laptop thing, and he's like, that's it, I'm not waiting. He went out and he bought a different device. He bought an HP device, 
And then, you know, like two weeks later, this comes out. So I emailed him today and I'm like, thanks for buying that other thing so that Microsoft will actually, you know, because if he would have waited, Microsoft would have waited, you know, two weeks longer than him, no matter what. <laughs> um, but for these, uh, and again, they're kind of doing the same thing they did with the Surface Laptop. They've got devices that are f that have four gig of RAM. I don't even know how you buy a device today that's got four gig RAM or use a device that's got four gig RAM, unless we're talking about your cell phone. Yeah, my, my cell phone probably has more RAM than that. Um, but then uh, they've got you know M3, i5, and i7, four gig, eight gig, and then 16 gig of RAM. The cheapest device with 16 gig of RAM starts out at $2,200. And I think that's 16 gig of RAM and a 256 gig uh, storage device. Um, so for those of you that have been waiting, today was the day. Um, and I guess they're, uh, you can pre-order them today. I don't know when they'll actually be hitting the streets, but between the surface laptop and all that, I just, I don't know if my next device is going to be a surface device or not. I just, I'm not convinced. It's, um, you know, I mean, I, I like my surface pro four still, but I, it's it's tough and you know the, the surface pro 4 i think the only one i could afford was i think it's eight gigs of ram and you know it's like you said it barely it, it does outlook and, uh, it's probably yeah. it stops you open up a couple of browsers and you're you're pretty much toast with eight gig of ram um so so we'll see i don't know there's some some brilliant devices out there hp's making some some nice devices um there's a Chinese company, Huawei or Huawei or something. They got these uh, new devices that came out that they released today that are that are essentially you know similar kind of devices. They've um, what do they call them? Just a second, I got this in my email. Um, but similar uh, so Mate books. So uh, Paul Thorat's got an article about that. They've got one that looks just like a Surface laptop. One that looks just like a Surface Pro. Um, so I don't know, but. We'll see. I was I was expecting more. I did not get what I was looking for. So, in our last couple of minutes, let's uh, shamelessly promote ourselves. Um, I'm going to be speaking at Office 365 Engage. A month from now, I will just be returning from that. Uh, that's in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So head on over to toddclint.com slash office 365 engage to find out what I'm going to be talking about or office 365 engage.com to go ahead and sign up. If you do sign up, please go to my blog, check that article. There's a discount code in there. Get you some money off. Gets me a pat on the head from the conference uh, organizers. And uh, let's learn about uh, Azure AD and office 365 and all that uh, in the Netherlands together. And you guys want to know the best part about that conference? It is on a what is, Monday, so that means we will have a week together where it's just us. No Todd to ruin the show, no hit, no laggy video from Todd, no grumpy audio. It'll just be my wonderful voice for a whole show. We'll probably make that an extended show. That might be like a four-hour show. Look it will just seem it. like four hours for the listeners. Um, and I've, I've made my flights, but I don't remember time zone-wise if I get there in time, if I'll be able to come in and crash the party or not. We'll have to see. Uh, cause I've got, so it's funny, this conference, I agreed to do this conference and then a bunch of family stuff started bookending all over it. So I had to make crazy flights to, to make it all work. Um, but then, uh, in September is the SharePoint exchange forum in Stockholm. And I've been going there for a hundred years. Joram puts on a great conference this year. As I've said before, it's going to be a cruise. The conference is on a cruise ship. The cruise is between Stockholm and, uh, Tallinn and back. So going to be a great time if you're in europe hit both of those conferences and the, the website for that one is uh seforum.se and it's going to be a going to be a great time sign up for that and then finally in july i guess i should have that sooner up i'm going to be speaking at the virtually at the st louis sharepoint user group and i'm going to be talking about onedrive surprise surprise mainly because i love it but mostly to irritate shane uh, and honestly, so in all, so Shane spoke there a couple of months ago and the guy that he talked to convinced me to do it. I figured after suffering through Shane, these people deserved a real presentation and he's like, send me an abstract. Tell me what you're going to talk about. And being the good uh, presenter that I am and, and being all dutiful, I said, what do your people want to hear about? I can talk about a bunch of different things. What do your people yearn to have more knowledge about? And he's like, getting a lot of questions about OneDrive. Of course you are. So... There we go. Plant. There was a plant in the audience for that. Mm -hmm. Shane, I think I got you out two minutes early. 
Yeah, did a good job. Uh, you know, the apparently while we were going through the show, the video kind of resized itself a couple times, changed itself around. So uh, I look forward to what the recording looks like. Yeah, I lost you like three times. Uh, you, you're, yeah, I just gave up on it. Um, so thanks, everybody. No podcast next week, uh, I don't think. If we change our minds and decide to do it on Tuesday, we'll let you know. But assume you get uh, get a two-week break for that. Uh, and I'll get this one out as quick as we can. Thanks, everybody. See you in two weeks. Toodles. <laughs>